NVIDIA, right, stock is rocking uh, because of what it's doing in data center AI. But believe it or not, uh, it's actually still very engaged in elements like uh, automotive, the industrial edge, uh, and of course, uh, gaming. Uh, Dan, you and I uh, attended CES where we had a couple engagements there at NVIDIA. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have a conversation uh, with, with Jensen. It wasn't scheduled. It was very happenstance. I've known the guy since 1998, but you and I were both part of the uh, financial uh, analyst day uh, and the Q&A, and I think we both uh, watched the keynote in the comfort of, of our own rooms. So what is the next opportunity? And, and, you know, the company has been laying out cookie crumbs for a long time, and particularly on its uh, financial analyst calls, in, in the amount of time it devotes to topics that are not um, data center uh, AI. So this notion of uh, primarily robots, we know that that they're in the automotive industry, but uh, industrial robotics uh, is the next big thing. And when I say industrial, that's a loose term that can go even into, into, into healthcare. But essentially they introduced um, uh, a product called uh, Cosmos. And uh, think of Cosmos as a world foundational model. Uh, to be able to uh, train, essentially train uh, robots, right? And they've got different levels. And and you might be asking, well, wait a second, um, isn't that how? Um, uh, isn't that what Omniverse did? Well, think of Omniverse as having very, very detailed and precise uh, models in in the physical world. Uh, it's a little bit more of a challenge, though, to extend that into the virtual world and to be able to train to essentially make these robots a lot smarter. So if you take Omniverse and you feed that data uh, into Cosmos, uh, the theory here is that the quality goes up. And, you know, we've seen synthetic video uh, worlds being created before. I mean... Um, NVIDIA did it with, with Omniverse, and you see companies like OpenAI with Sora, and you see companies like Adobe, uh, they haven't uh, gone GA on this, but video Firefly, right, to be able to create synthetic. And the challenge, though, has been if you're trying to train a robot with a high degree of accuracy in what it does, literally to how it interacts, the quality of the video output has to be uh, higher. So it's clear that that you know the next big planned growth area for NVIDIA uh, is in uh, robotics. Uh, you can use Cosmos for automotive. We're going to see this, and you know, in my let my imagination run wild. Why wouldn't we use Cosmos for something like uh, like entertainment? Right and, and the ability to be able to um, uh, improve the output of entertainment comment uh, content basically a better uh, a better Sora. Is that it? You done? You there, Dan. I tap the oh, microphone. Yeah. You there? No, I was there. I just I'm not used portfolio. to you. I'm not used to you talking that little. I'm just like floored. That was actually really fast. Uh, Pat probably has another workout to get to. I mean, when you're getting huge, you just don't have that much time for this stuff. No, I'm, in, in all serious, um, that was that was really a good breakdown. You know, I'm going to kind of try to tie some threads together. I know we have like a 7.5 today with like three NVIDIA tracks. And, you know, I know they're different topics, but there's some of this is all the same to me. And so the thesis about NVIDIA has been that its business is basically valued for the number of data center GPUs it can sell. And then, of course, the attached software licensing, and it's all really been attached to the amount of expected capex spent by the largest uh, hyperscalers in the world. Yeah. The antithesis of the business has been whether or not the hyperscalers of the world are going to continue to build all of the AI of the future on NVIDIA's business systems, or are they going to vertically integrate with their own SPUs built with Broadcom, Marvell, 
Um, and and by the way, these things are, you know, they're they're somewhat interdependent, but in some ways mutually exclusive. Because I think the answer is going to be both. Having said that, I said the the entire CES keynote was all about NVIDIA showing that their AI extends beyond the data center, and here's all the ways it extends beyond the data center. But, and it's an important but, at the same time, all of this will create more demand in the data center because let's face it, 30, dollars $40,000 GPUs sold 72 at a time with hundreds of CPU cores uh, and licenses att attached to that that ultimately end up then creating more licenses for Omniverse and then more licenses for, you know, edge-based solutions and Orin in the vehicles and everything else that's going on is a really, really lucrative business. And so yeah. the themes of this event, and, and you know, I'm gonna stay with the one theme uh, here, but there were three. Um, the three themes were, you know, it was physical AI, it was automotive, and it was um, PCs and future of client, okay? So you kind of here are basically talking about this physical AI thing. And the physical AI thing as I see it is the next trillion dollar plus leg up for NVIDIA. This is where they get the next trillion dollars in market cap. Why? Because two things. One, it's really hard. So all yeah. the things that you're sort of hearing about um, like ASICs and accelerators for the data center, what NVIDIA is doing here, none of that stuff can do that right now. Now they will be able to build that stuff. But the second thing is how this all threads together between that simulated world with synthetic data and the physical world with real data. We heard Elon Musk trade sees Elon uh, sees Tesla stock traded something like five times higher than the average mag seven in terms of forward multiple. And the reason is, is because people believe he's going to solve two major themes of the future around AI. One, autonomy and driving, which by the way, Waymo does better right now. Yeah. And two, um, but he has more cars, more data. You know, there's a lot of reasons why a Tesla could win. The second thing is he's going to solve humanoid robots. So he's got the, remember the guy on stage in the suit two years ago? And then this year they had the ones pouring drinks that were like kind of semi, I think there was someone in the back probably with a remote control doing things. But like you went to CES this year, you saw physical robots. You saw robots that could, you know, move boxes and robots that could, you know, walk around with us. And you saw robots that could offer companionship. But the thing is, is that if you just get to the level of every human has a robot, just that, and you're talking about something that costs as much as a Tesla two or three at 30 yeah. to 40,000, the, the, the economics of this become really powerful. Well, someone actually has to build the software stack to train that robot, to be useful. Um, otherwise, you end up with the little things we have now that walk around the house and then you know fall over and set themselves on fire, the thing that walks around your pool that forgets to clean. I mean. There's robots now. There's robots in commerce. There's, ro you know, it's everywhere. But Jensen's basically saying the mechanics of the human, the physical mechanics of the way we move, say walking up a hill or down a hill, is really hard. To simulate that, you would need to literally have tons and tons of training data. Well, with what they've built in the connective tissue between Cosmos, Groot, uh, Omniverse, you can basically simulate this stuff faster, build models, and then get us to humanoid robots a heck of a lot faster. Um, so it's really cool, exciting stuff, Pat. And so I, I know we're going to talk more NVIDIA, so I'll end that theme on that one. But like, um, I really think the market sort of misunderstood what happened. I think it was basically, and he said, the chat GPT moment for, um, for physical AI. But I, I just think it's the stack, the stack that's become the all-in data center digital AI stack that people are using for software. We're seeing them build something very similar for the physical world. And that's going to be really hard to replicate and it could be a really great long-term moat for NVIDIA.